Good to see you. So Yaroslav is joining us from Switzerland. He is with uh, EMPA. And uh, they're developing some very interesting work on thin film, solid state batteries. Uh, you know, from micro devices to also monolithically stacked uh, batteries. So it's a very interesting work. Uh, so the stage is yours. You have 20 minutes. Again, a note to the audience, ask your questions. We will ask the questions from, from the speakers. So yeah, good luck. Kasha, thanks for the introduction. As you might know, uh, there have been uh, other speakers from EMPA uh, talking about photovoltaics and batteries in the past editions of TechBleak. So this time I would like to present some of the research highlights on thin film solid state batteries, which are done in our laboratory for thin films and photovoltaics. So here is the table of contents of my talk. Uh, probably it would be useful for those who will be uh, watching uh, the recorded uh, version. After a short introduction, I will present mainly three uh, highlights uh, on the cathode, separator, and anode parts of the solid state battery. And at last, I will present you the concept of the monolithic uh, multi cell battery. To remind those who uh, are not that familiar that uh, the solid state thin film batteries, these are solid state devices and the thickness of the, all the active layers is on the order of from one to up to 10 micrometers. That's why they're called thin films. And uh, they're fabricated by uh, different uh, physical vapor deposition methods. Since they are solid state batteries, they uh, ultimately offer all the advantages of this technology, namely low self discharge and low lifetime. Uh, it was a demonstration of up to 10,000 cycles by the Oak Ridge National Lab. A unique feature of thin film batteries is that they can be charged and discharged at very high rates up to 100 C or even uh, uh, way uh, above that. One of the um, uh, weaknesses and probably the major weakness of the thin film geometry is that the aerial capacities and current densities are very low. Nevertheless, there have been uh, many companies who try to commercialize this technology, several of them starting from the Oak Ridge lab and uh, yeah, several of them are still marketing this technology for various applications, including IoT. We fabricate such batteries at EMPA using uh, this line, which you can see on the slide. It's actually all dry vacuum deposition. Uh, there are several parts, so we are using uh, a combination of magnetron sputtering, then we are testing our materials in half cells uh, using electrochemistry methods. Then we transfer to a second glove box where we finish and complete uh, our devices by evaporating uh, uh, metallic lithium and uh, current collectors on top. Sometimes we use uh, atomic layer deposition and uh, flash lamp annealing to complement the, the layer stack and introduce interlayers. So here, uh, I would like to continue with these uh, research highlights. There will be three of them. And um, I would like to start with the cathode. Uh, uh, and in this case, uh, a story about uh, lithium-rich NMC811. So as you know, this uh, material, this cathode material is very popular and it's regarded as one of the most promising cathodes for high power batteries, thanks to the high nickel content. And uh, its capacity reaches 200 or even more. And one of the uh, uh, further uh, capacity boosters could be to put extra lithium into the NMC structure. And we were doing it in the thin film geometry, so on the top, uh, left, you see uh, a cross section of such a device which features NMC811 thin film, which was deposited from a lithium rich target by magnetron sputtering. Uh, the structure of this film it resembles the, uh, it uh, corresponds to the structure of layered oxide compound, which you can see uh, on the lower 